Homily number two. Just a few brief words, though. Because this is definitely, this is one of my favorite times of the year right now. Though it might not have felt like it this morning, it's slowly, slowly starting to get a little warmer outside. The trees and the plants are thinking about, you know, becoming green again, not just seeing this brown all the time. Hopefully, we'll hear the crack of the bat again. Baseball will start to be played as this, this time for that. And ultimately, we celebrate Holy Week during this time, during this time of spring, these holy days in which we walk the way with our Lord. But also selfishly as well, I do enjoy it this time of the year as well because those that are sports fans know that we're in the thick of March Madness right now. The basketball turn, right? NCAA. You may have filled out a pool, maybe not, but you're definitely, I'm sure all of us are aware of this. And though it's been somewhat a hard year for myself as my beloved Badgers did not make it this year after an 18-year streak, which is nothing to be ashamed about, thankfully the Ron Colley boys kind of helped me get over that with their basketball championship, so that was good to witness for myself. But I was watching, as I was watching some of the games, I was just kind of amazed. I started to think about how much preparation must go into that tournament. Think about that. All the sites that have to be chosen, how many people must go in there? How much security do they need? Parking, all this food, all this preparation that has to go into this. And then if you look at the teams, how many hours of practice? How many hours of watching film? How many games? How many times in the weight room? Whatever it might be. All this preparation that goes into this event. And I was just curious. I'm like, how much, how much do they plan for this? How far out? So I looked on the internet in case anybody was curious. They already planned out to 2022. So in 2022, the Final Four is going to be in New Orleans, Louisiana. So if you want to book your tickets now, I would say go ahead and do that now. But they're already four years out. That much preparation is needed. Preparation. Something that's sometimes hard to do, but something that's necessary to do. And we prepare for all sorts of things. Those who are working, those who spent their life working, you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes into our job. Waking up every morning, getting ready, getting what we need to accomplish that day, the tasks, the obligations, whatever it might be. For those that have young families or have had families in the past, you know, it takes, preparation takes everything. No matter what you do, it takes preparation. Whether you're going somewhere, whether you're doing something, whatever it might be, there's a ton of preparation that goes into that. And yesterday as well, yesterday at the Grand Church, we had a, a retreat for those that are making their first communion. They'll be making their first communion in April. So we had a little retreat day. They prepared for that day. They learned what the Eucharist is all about, what Mass is all about, spent time in adoration, all this preparation, plus all the hours in the classroom that went into that. Preparation is necessary. And it's something that I've learned too just in my brief time here as a priest because we were already talking about Easter during the first week of Lent. I'm like, hold the phone. We just finished up Ash Wednesday. And we're already talking about Easter because we have to take that time to prepare. But I'm excited that we're finally able to get to these days. I guess I want to apologize if I doused anybody too much as I was coming up with the Holy Hour. I got a little excited. This is the first time I was able to do that. So uh, learning a little bit about that. But I know how much time goes into that. And I want to thank everybody who have put the time in to help prepare for our Palm Sunday celebration and all those who will help to celebrate these feasts ahead of us. Because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. But I think the question for us today, just to go with for today, is how are we preparing ourselves? How are we preparing for the feasts ahead? And no, I'm not talking about the grocery list. I'm not talking about pulling the folding chairs out when company comes over or cleaning the house. Not that, not that type of preparation. But the preparation in here. How are we preparing our hearts how are we preparing our souls for these holy days that we're about to embark upon, that we're about to celebrate as a church? It might be something we don't think about too much because we've been through Holy Week. We know what's going to happen. We've gone through Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. We know what's going to happen. But we can't forget about the importance of these days. We can't forget about how our Lord wants to communicate to us, communicate in our hearts, communicate in our souls what he wants to give us during this Holy Week, how he wants to grab our attention to show us something about him. Because that's why we celebrate these each and every year, to go back, to go back to the story, the passion, the death, but the resurrection as well. And if we forget about this, then we can lose all those, all those graces that our Lord wishes to bestow upon us, all the blessings that he wants to give us during these holy days, during this holy time. 
So therefore, brothers and sisters, Jesus invites us into this Holy Week this day, and I encourage you to take the time to prepare. Take the time to go through the readings that we're going to hear during Holy Week. Take the time to go to the Masses, to go to the celebrations, to enter into that Holy Week. To take the time to open your hearts, to open your souls to what our Lord wants to give you during this Holy Week, how he wants to make himself known to you through his Paschal mystery. Jesus is inviting us. He invites us today on this Palm Sunday, but he invites us to walk with him to the Last Supper, to walk with him to Calvary, to walk with him to the empty tomb. But are we prepared to go with him?